Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Jen Mott. There we go. Let's go. All right. I love it. <laughs> All right. I, I am blessed uh, actually to connect today with Jen Mott. She is an assistant principal and athletic director at Mason Middle School. And not only that, uh, she's a presenter, uh, and she's about to become an author. So we are recording this in January, and this will be released in March. And you will be able to check out her new book, uh, Teacher Verence, Nurturing Hope While Embracing Perseverance in Education, which I spelled wrong. And I, I'm i like very proud of how good of a speller I am. And I'm like, it's going to bug me forever. That I spelled, I'm like, what did I spell wrong? Because I got the little red squiggly. So I'm struggling with that a little yes, bit. Yes, of course. It but takes now, a second for everyone, but now, I've learned too. <laughs> right. Now it's burnt in my brain. So uh, I, I love exactly it. So thanks, it. thanks for being on the podcast. And we're going to get into three questions um, and ask you some about some of the inspiration you've had, but, um, just, just for, you know, people who are new to you and, um, you know, going to check out your book. Can you give us a little, like one to two minute synopsis of your new book, Teacher Veerance? Sure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yep. the Teacher Veerance is a play off of the words teacher and perseverance. It's based on my research and my doctoral program on Teacher Veerance, which I did during fall of 20. 2020 of all times. And so I asked a bunch of teachers, why are you staying? What keeps you going? Right. Um, because I'm doing the optimist conversation of what everyone else is hearing of how teachers are leaving. I decided to flip the script and say, but why don't we ask the teachers who are staying what's keeping them going? And so I found uh, through my research four themes and they are higher calling community, the only option and contextual joy. And I kind of fleshed those out through narrative uh, storytelling, through the conversations that I had with these teachers. And I even did a follow-up three years later of their experiences, not only from then and the, re the original research, but then I do a follow-up on how are they doing now and what are they up to now and what would they tell themselves three years ago, 10 years ago, and that kind of thing. So that's what teacher appearance is, is just a call to action for teachers and administrators to show the positive side of teaching and why people choose to stay, because it really is an amazing career choice. I, you know, so I, I really appreciate that because a lot of times I'll, um, I've seen speakers saying like, hey, you can't make it, um, you can't be successful. And you kind of see that uh, I see it like on Instagram, like, Hey, you know, kind of like give up on this dream or whatever. I, I do see that sometimes. And I'm like, well, that person's doing really well. So what are they doing? Like, how come they're doing well, but they're telling other people like, you know, sometimes, Hey, kids can't make it. Teachers are quitting. So how did you get people to stay? And I think that, you know, it's not, I, I appreciate that you're acknowledging, of course, you know, there are teachers are leaving. So what can we do? And how can we learn from the people that have chosen to stay and what benefit is that? So I, I appreciate that because I want to know, like, I think that's something for me is I said this just last week, if you complain about a problem and you complain and complain and complain at the end of your complaining, guess what? Still a problem. doesn't solve anything. It's only through <laughs> actions that actually change things. So I, I'm glad you're, you're focusing on, you know, the people who have chosen to stay and what did that. And hopefully someone who's listening, well, pick that book up and, you know, learn from that to, you know, help the people that are thinking of going, right? Because you can't blame That's them. Right. Either. So I think that, that I really appreciate that. So we are going to get more into the book um, in the longer po podcast, but I do want to hear about some of your inspiration. I know that you're doing some, like, you do some really like, this is kind of, I don't know, like, should I say, what's the side gig? Is, is the teaching <laughs> side gig? Because I know you like, you, you, you like, you're a juggler, right? Too. Like you juggle. And I am. Performer. Cause I like, if you look you yes, up, I know. juggling stuff all over the place. It's, Tell me about that. It's true. You, you learn a lot quickly when you Google me, but I, uh, you know, all, all of us as educators juggle a lot of things. Um, but I've chosen to quite literally juggle and I have been a professional juggler for nearly two decades and it's the longest job I've ever held. <laughs> and it uh, brought me through college, my master's and my doctoral uh, program. And I do juggling, balloon artistry, still walking and fire performing. Um, and I've done that a lot of different places, truly all over the world. And it's been an amazing experience oh. to be able to merge over the years, the entertainment and the education. And, um, you know, I do a lot of entertainment at school and was just in a talent show a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago with our students um, on stage with them because we do juggling club at recess and just those kind of things. So it's a really fun um, side hustle that I've had uh, before side hustles were cool. So I, I really love it. enjoy it. I love it. it. 
You should go, you should, yeah. I, you know, I'm a big NBA person. You should do, you know, I've like went, I remember I went to a Cleveland Cavaliers game and I went to a New York Knicks game and they're, the Lakers are playing and they have the same, like the performers actually go from city to city. You should do that. And get me tickets if you do. I, that, I, if you do that, I want to. I got you. Yeah. I got you. All right. All okay. Right. Sounds good. Ahead. I can hook right. you up for sure. Yes, I'm always I, open did, to other opportunities. I did give you the idea, so you know if we're gonna if you're yes, gonna get to the sure. NBA, I want a little I want a little hookup. <laughs> so all right, okay. When I make it to the NBA, you will be there. Yes, sounds Man, good. I cannot wait. All right, let's just can we just say any awesome. professional sports league, just in case, like if you okay. get an NFL okay, sounds then, good. We'll make it general. <laughs> Understood. Okay. okay, got it. All I'll right, write that into the contract for sure. Yeah. Okay, three questions. So you are currently assistant principal. I know you've taught, yeah. but when you look back at your career and you think about like a teacher inspired you, someone maybe you worked with, someone you had as a student, who's someone you think of immediately and why? So my very first answer that I have to say is my two parents, because they are both educators um, through and through. They, I've come from a family of educators, um, but my parents are just incredible humans. They're incredible uh, educators. Uh, my mom, most of her career was K-6 world as a teacher. And then my dad, most of his career was in higher education. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful to have had them modeled such strong educational values from the beginning, both in their work lives and how much they poured into their students and their work, but then also into me and my brother. Um, so I just, I, I kept going back to when you were asking me or when I listened to you talking to others about that question, I have to start with my parents. Um, but then in the more traditional sense of K-12 world, I always have a hard time giving a call out to my teachers because I'm the kind of person that remembers every single one of them mm -hmm. and they're all amazing. And I'm fortunate to live down the street from where I went to school and I still keep in touch with a lot of my former teachers. And so I like to speak in general terms of, I can think of the elementary teachers who made me fall in love with school and made me just like really enjoy learning and wanting to be at school every single day. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher because of them, because of my family, and they never changed that you know trajectory for me. And then I can think of my junior high teachers. Again, this is so many of them. That's why I don't like calling one out just because I truly, but my junior high teachers, I am in a seventh and eighth grade building now. And there are days where I revert back to how seventh and eighth grade me felt. Mm -hmm. And I right. just think the superheroes that I got to work with as a student, and they were my teachers, I was so insecure at certain moments, right? And I just remember those feelings of, like when I'm working with students now and I'm like, yes, I was like that, right? Like that was me. And I just remember some of my junior high teachers and how they built into me. And then the biggest thing with high school that I remember with certain teachers of mine was the capacity that they built in me to lead and to be myself. So for example, in high school, I had the opportunity with my English teacher, I had to perform a speech about a book we were reading and I chose to juggle. This was way before yeah. I ever thought I was gonna be a professional juggler. I just liked juggling because I was a student athlete who enjoyed juggling. And this teacher thought, yeah, sure. Nobody else was doing anything performative other than giving a speech, but I just felt like I wanted to juggle. I felt like there were visuals. And there I was as a senior in high school, juggling in front of my peers and telling the story of life through the book, Life of Pi. And mm. I, a few months later, stumbled upon a job in a circus that now I've done for 18 years. And I just think of moments like that where he didn't shut that down. He mm. didn't shut down that thought for me. And what's really special is his wife is actually a teacher in our building now. So it just talk about full circle and just really mm. the idea of how many people have built into me in those ways of letting me be fully and authentically me. And I'm just really grateful for uh, some of those amazing teachers over the years. Okay, so shout out to basically everyone, everyone. Yes, yes. I love it. Yeah. And you know how that, what you just described, I, I hope is the standard experience for kids in school. Uh, I, so I, lucky. I hate, I know this is gonna sound horrible. I hate, um, I don't know who said it, but there's a reason it bugs me and it's gonna be sound like I'm a horrible person when it first starts, but there's a bigger clue to this is like every kid needs like one champion in schools. I'm like, really? Like in 12, 13 years, one, that's it? Like, seriously, mm -hmm. it should be mm -hmm. like, you know, it should be, and it shouldn't be just teachers, you know, it's, it's our support staff. And so you, yes, you kind of, you, you it's kind of coaches, 
it's totally. the principles, it's all the things. Yeah. And that, that should be, you know, like that you're kind of like as a student feeling that you can go kind of anywhere and there's someone who's like mm-hmm. excited for, to see you and excited for you. And you know, that, that to me is a, is a great answer. I absolutely, I absolutely love that. I, I, here's a little side question. What was, I'm curious if this is just me, what was the age you're like, okay, I can call them by their first name. Did you have that struggle? I, you know, I appreciate you asking. So I actually had the opportunity to go back and teach at my mm. seventh and eighth grade building. And so that was the moment where some of the teachers were like, you still have never called me by your my first right. name. And I'm like, oh, is that okay now? Am I allowed? And yeah, they it takes a while. Me permission very explicitly. So it did take a while, but I, <laughs> by the time I was 24, I got there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Okay. So currently you are an assistant principal and your athletic director, and I'm sure that you work, I'm sure you have an incredible principal, right? So shout out to your principal. Right? So whoever that is. That's right. He's amazing. Right. We love him. Yes. All right. Thank you. So I got to make sure he's so, even if you didn't say your principal, but you think about aspiring administrators, someone um, that you really learned from again, whether you're a kid, whether you did this as a teacher in your current role, who's someone you think of immediately and why? Yeah, so I will give a shout out to Mr. Reuter in our building. He is an amazing principal Mm -hmm. who I've gotten to work with for four years now. Um, But for me and my own experience as a teacher, uh, the first person who comes to mind is Lisa Zelby. And uh, she is still at that same district where I worked and where I went as a student. Mm -hmm. And she, um, here's something she did. When I was teaching, I had a year uh, particularly that was so challenging. And I speak about it a little bit in my book of just how um, low I felt and that my personal connection to the work I did was I felt like I wanted to give up, right? Like I was down and out about my career choice because of a lot of factors. And she saw that in me and she was the one who basically said to me, you can go through this because this is not everything for you. Mm. Like you have more to give this profession and this is not your story for your entire career. And so she was the one who wrote my recommendation letter to go back and get my doctorate and work in educational leadership and go through that route and get my administrative license. Uh, she was the one who said, let me help you write the write the recommendation, but also cheer you on through the program. And in a five and a half year program, I switched districts four times, I think, three. I was in four different districts in five and a half years. And she was like a steady force of um, kind of like wishing me into other uh, spaces that I didn't expect to go into, but in a way that was like, this, that you, you were meant for more. And I just really appreciated her willingness to see that. And at the same time, the principal, Tracy Ray, at the time who was there, she gave me the opportunity to sub in the office so that I could see what administration life looked like. Because as I'm trying to like grapple with the teaching role that I had and continuing through administration, they were really big about like supporting me as a teacher, but also supporting me as a professional who maybe had other dreams and hopes and aspirations. And so I'm just really grateful for the two of them being able to kind of like give me those opportunities early on and believe in me in ways that I didn't necessarily believe in myself, but I trusted their judgment and their, you know, leadership. And I just felt very supported by those opportunities and by the kind of like support they provided over the years that even beyond me leaving that school, um, ultimately, because I had to spread my wings and fly, it was a school I never thought I'd leave. And I'm just grateful to them for cheering me along and understanding why, because there was more to my story than that. I love it. Shout out to all the men who see us when we're struggling and still see that potential. So I love it. I love it. It's so true. That's- Cause it's that's so not always the case. Sometimes, yes. you know, we're struggling. That's when people start pushing you aside. Is that, you know, like I, I, I have a story like that too. So, um, I, I'm blessed to have had people like that in my life. All right. Last question. Yeah. So, you know, you, you have a lot of different experiences and you know, you're currently in men. I'm sure you have been that person as an administrator that others were for you that you just shared. But if you can go back to your very first year of teaching and give yourself some advice, what would that be? It would be that teaching is as important as you think it is and so much more not only for you and so that's for me like as the professional but for the hundreds if not thousands that you are going to impact and so telling first year self 
that it is so much bigger than the perfect lesson plan or the perfect, um, you know, like classroom management strategy that for generations you can impact because of moments that you have in your class. Just being able to fully understand that as a little 22 year old starting out, I would have loved to have understood the complete trajectory change that students can have as a result of being in my classroom. And I don't want to overhype or oversell the, you know, like it's, it's not that every single day you're going to have those interactions, but sometimes we are the seed planters and gosh, just being about halfway through my career now and being able to see uh, students come back and share stories of that classroom environment that was created. I could have never fully understood how impactful that was over time. And I wish I would have understood that more fully when I had a classroom. Love it. And that, that is like you, that is beautifully said because you don't, when you work with kids, you don't just impact them, you impact everyone they, um, they connect with, you know, mm -hmm. good or bad. And, uh, you know, we always want it to be good. Yes. So, um, I really appreciate yeah. it. So Jen, thanks so much for taking time to answer these questions. Uh, and everyone, if you want to check out the book, teacher Verance, nurturing hope while embracing perseverance in education, perseverance, I cannot say that word. I can say teacher variance is a new <laughs> word and I'm way better at that one. Perfect. So that tells that's you right. it's a good title. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, check it out. It's thank down you. in the link below. Jen, great to talk to you. Look forward to learning more. Uh, thanks. Thank you thank everyone you so for much. listening. Hope you have a wonderful day.